welcome to this spring equinox day. It's the 20th of March um, and we're going to try and catch fish on a dry fly. This is for the foolhardy uh, and if you are going to fish at this time of year you want to use a pattern which is very effective and the pattern I'm about to show you is a superb imitation of the large dark olive and that's one of the early mayflies. It's a, f a fly that fish get keyed into very early in the season. Now the hook is a Maruto DO4 BL size 14. You could also use a size 16 but the large dark olive is actually quite a large beastie so a 14 works quite nicely. And we're going to use a few materials. UV Hazier Plus. We're going to use olive brown. That's number five. That's available on the OnStream Guide website. Uh, we're going to use uh, a Coq de Leon. This is a light Pardue Coq de Leon, a few fibres of Coq de Leon to form the f uh, tail on the mayfly. And the legs, the soft hackle, is going to be uh, jungle cock. This is jungle cock. So all your, all your jungle cock capes that you've been using, the uh, uh, all the feathers for your sea trout flies or your, or your jacids, your trout flies, the spade feathers make excellent uh, soft hackles. So to tie the fly, we tie the thread in. This is orange thread. The late, great Richard Walker made uh, an observation that mayflies, in the process of emergence, flush red and an orange. And therefore, an orange or a red thread is actually highly Im imitative. And another reason for using an orange thread in this particular pattern is the head of the large dark olive is also orange. So we tie in a few fibres, just two to three fibres of the Coq de Leon to form the tail on that mayfly like so. And take a small pinch of the UV hairs here. This is very, very soft dubbing. It's very easy to use. So I'm just going to finger dub it on very gently. UV dubbing, as I said, finger dubs on very nicely. And form a body, a nice tapered body, about two thirds along the length of the fly like so. And that is the body and the tail of the large dark olive imitation tied. Uh, and for the wing, we're going to use uh, a CDC wing. This paired style is shown in our DVD, A Half Dozen Deadly River Dry Flies. So I'm going to pair two feathers of CDC, put them either side of the hook shank, and then pull them into position to form a very realistic profile for the large dark olive wing. And when I'm happy that they're the right size, which is about now, I'll tie them in with a couple of turns behind. And then I'll tie the stalks in very firmly all the way to the hook eye. It's very important that you do this because if you don't do this, what can happen is trout's teeth can catch the CDC and extricate the feather and actually pull it off the hook. So that's the profile. I've just clipped, the, uh, clipped away the waist there very quickly. So that's the profile of the fly. It's very neat. And so we finally, and the most important part of the fly is the soft tackle. I tease away the tip of this jungle cock spade hackle and lay it, lay it like so up to the hook and tie in that tip, that waist stalk, nice and firmly. When it's firmly tied in like so, you can trim the waist. Now, the first turn I make with this hackle will be behind the CDC wing. Nice firm turns, and then there'll be two full turns in front of the CDC wing, like so. And when we're finished, tie off nice and firmly just behind the high, 
like so. And this gives a beautiful imprint. The fly is very, very realistic. It has the same imprint as the natural large dark olive. Now I've just trimmed that waist stalk there and just tidy a few excess fibers above the oak high, which will interfere with the whip finish. And now I'm going to whip finish. Now I'm not bothered that some of the fibers are pointing forward of the hook eye. This might be quite upsetting to experienced tyres who like everything to be extremely neat, but in fact this imitates the natural profile. Now I've just whipped finish there by hand, nice and firm, and the fly is now finished. Now the only thing I'll do now is I'll take it out the vise and I'll just make sure that all the legs are sticking out at the nice angle like so and it has a beautiful natural parachute effect which I'll demonstrate by just popping the fly down on the bench in front of me now and we'll see how the fly sits if the wind will allow us, the breeze. Oops, it's a little bit too breezy. My fly sits with a very, very natural profile with the right footprint and the right color and size of legs. It's an extremely effective imitation of the large dark olive. Welcome back to OnStream Guide. It's the start of the trout season, at least here in Cumbria. The, the season here starts uh, on the 15th of March and we're on the stunning River Eden. And we're gonna be fishing the, the fly that you've seen us tie and we're gonna be targeting any fish that might rise to the large dark olives that hopefully will hatch. Now, it's very, very early in the season. It's a foolish time of year really to fish dry flies, but because we're so keen uh, we're here right now and it's a beautiful day and we're going to make the most of it. So let's see what we can do. The setup is simplicity itself. This is my trusty, beautiful vintage Sage Light Line 389. That's a three weight rod, eight foot nine inches. Uh, most uh, river rods should be between eight and nine feet and three and four weight are ideal weight for rivers. My tippet is just literally four and a half feet of Orvis Super Strong. This is 5X. And then I've got a furled leader, an on-stream guide furled leader. These are really essential to help the presentation of the dry fly. Because they're so soft and malleable, uh, they keep the dry fly drag free. So a furled leader is really essential. Now, the fly is the fly you've seen us tied. That is the soft hackle tied with a jungle cock spade, CDC wing, it's a high wing, and it's an excellent imitation of the large dark olive, which is the first mayfly of the year uh, on UK rivers, at least in the north where we are now. It's a gorgeous day, so let's get on with the fishing. So here's the fly that you saw me tie, the large dark olive pattern in practice. There's just a trickle, a few hatching. One or two fish have moved for them. So we're just going to, in very shallow water, so we have to be very, very quiet. And even though this hatch is very sparse, that soft tackle dry is working in this crystal clear river in this tail. We've got to be 
extremely quiet with our approach. These fish are very spooky. That's a stunning wild trout taken in by that soft spade hackle large dark olive fly that you saw us tie. Gorgeous fish. And that should be the first of many. And we can see this wild fish is in very good condition. It's mid-March, very early in the season, to be catching on dry flies. It's a beautiful, beautiful wild fish, rather slim from a hard winter. And we can see that the fish wanted the fly. He's taken it nicely. The barbless hook, of course. That Maruto barbless hook that you saw Let's tie that pattern on. That's the first fish of the day. So what we're doing is stalking rising fish using the large dark olive pattern that you saw us tie. And we saw that fish rise there very carefully, got into position, and you saw the results. Uh, hopefully we'll find one or two more fish rising and have a little more dry fly sport. And there was another fish on that soft tackle dry, hit it in the fast water. So no idea what sort of size it is yet, but that's the fly we tied up. And it's mid-March and the hatch today has been sporadic, say the least. In fact, we've seen two fish rise all day. And this was the third, and it took the fly. So just fishing that soft hackle, large dark olive fly into that fast water. And we're pulling up these stunning wild Eden trout. Beautifully marked fish. It's a particular feature. These fish are always marked in a very similar way. And they are very, very nice fish. Very pretty, butter golden fish. A very gorgeous looking wild brown trout, particular to this environment. And there's that stunning wild fish, beautiful Eden trout on that soft tackle dry we tied up. Very little moving for today. But when you've got the right pattern and the fish are in the mood and off he goes between my legs for another day. So today's been quite a tough day. Um, it's mid-March and the river's very low. And we've had very variable conditions today. We've had quite a cool breeze, uh, some sunshine, um, typical March spring weather. It's the autumn equinox today, so it's the first real day of spring. And so we've caught a couple of fish. We've had to work for those fish. But as you've seen, they're beautiful, beautiful fish. It's the spring equinox today, and that was a tough day's fishing. It's mid-March. Uh, it's never the best time of year to fish in a river. The fish are still uh, starting to warm up from a cold winter. It's been a tough year for the fish today. Uh, for the for the fish this year because this winter's been terrible. We've had very high water, but we've enjoyed the day. It's been a, a, the, the conditions have been conducive uh, for us, if not for the fish. We've only seen two fish rise all day, uh, and we caught two. Uh, one of them, the one I've just caught, I caught blind, just fishing the fly into an area where I thought the fish might be looking up. The hatch of large dark olives today, which the soft hackle fly that you saw us tie imitates has been very sparse and so the fishing's been 
tough, but sometimes you need tough days like this, and then you remember the better days. It's still been a gorgeous day, and we've still caught those wonderful wild trout. We hope to see you on the river again soon. Bye for now.